time. Yeah. We, we t- 10.5 last time. This is the other 0. 0.5. This is, we've added 0. 0.5 we onto have. it. Yes. We're actually at 11. It's a new year. It is a new year. The last time we did this, it was 2017. It seems so long ago. It does. It but, really does. But I guess it wasn't. It, it was, was just last Sunday. It was last Sunday. Yeah. But it seems long ago when you look at it in numbers, but we're here 2018. 2018. And this is the first week and some stuff happened. A little bit. Dave, it was yeah. better than the last couple of weeks, where I mean, I mean, for a lot of people, they need the time off. But for it, sure, yeah. For us, it's it's you know, it's, I want to do this. I no, want to cover some sure, stuff. Yeah. I want something to look at. We actually have some stuff to look at this we week, do. including uh, yeah, excellent stuff. I'm gonna I'll let you. I'll let you run the show. You do a much better job than me. So before I get out in front of myself, all right. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. I'm Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. Anthony, you're a much better host here. You Thank go ahead, you. You go ahead. You lead. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit about the markets. That's what I, that's what I was getting to um, before I realized that I need to actually let you do your job first. <laughs> and that's it was, it's the excitement of things just being good. Yep. You know, the markets continue to roar in 2018 as opposed to 2017. Numbers are up. Nasdaq closed uh, above 7,000 for the first time, 7,136 to close the week. S&P up all week, 2,743. Dow Jones, 25. 295, it was it was ups, ups, ups. I think the TSX closed at a record high this week, if not once, more than once. It, it's, yeah. To start 2018, we've got good news about the economy, Canadian-American economy throughout this. Holiday sales were good. There's... It's it's tough to find anything wrong right now. I'm <laughs> I'm digging for things that are wrong, and unfortunately, I'm not able to come up with. Just anything. can't find There's it. There's just not anything wrong out there. It's not bad though. Everything seems to be going good, but Broadcom's having a heck of a time getting the 11 board of directors on over at Qualcomm. That's right. That's about that and the <laughs> Intel thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Markets are doing great. Markets are, are you doing great? I'm doing great. You're doing great. I'm doing great. So That's the markets good. are doing great. We're doing great. People should be doing great. Yeah. Yeah, I would encourage, yeah, yeah, if you're not in on this, I don't know. We keep saying that. At this point in time, it's negligible. Yeah. You oh, should yeah, be in on this. Yeah. Speaking about Intel, what's going on with them? They've got this chip exploit in the processors, right? So... So there's this exploit, it's two actual exploits, uh, Meltdown is one of them, and Spectre is the other one. I think there's a couple of processors out there where only one of the exploits is exploitable. Okay. So the issue is, is that you can, these exploits could be used, they haven't been proven to have been used by anybody yet. Okay. So they, I guess they were found on Intel's end. The thing is, is Intel found these about six months ago and knew this already. And actually, they've had some higher-ups sell off pretty decent chunks of Intel shares oh, wow. in the interim between that six months when this was found out yeah. and now. And this only came out this week in the news. So other companies that were affected by this, products that they have that were affected by this, they weren't in the know. So Intel must have found this on their end. So it hasn't been exploited that we know. There's been a lot of patches, updates going on. They're trying to get everything in order, and that's totally understandable. Um, And they're going to do this in an expedited way because these chips are in so much stuff. I mean, Intel is the processor maker. Oh, they are. There's nobody out there. Everybody knows Intel. Intel's in everything, right? So they are scrambling, needless to say. Um, so nobody's exploited these. What they do is they gather data from your device's memory. So if you've inputted passwords, you've inputted usernames, it could be anything that you've inputted as data right, can be okay. pulled out. Now, data can't be manipulated. It can't be deleted. But if this was exploited, obviously, you could have a lot of really sensitive data that you've inputted into your device through a lot of like sign-up pages and stuff right. you use, stuff you use on, your, big on your browser. It could really damage a lot of people. Now, no known anything has happened yet. So a com- companies like AMD that obviously make computing processors yep. have thrived over this week as these exploits have been found to not be involved in their newest generation of processors, whereas they are in the Intel stuff. Uh, Intel fell as low as 42.69 this week. They ended up 44.74. So like they were up a little bit off the low, but they did. They took a big hit and, and until this is all patched up. And the thing is, is if they knew for six months and they never told you, are they going to come out and tell you that a lot of exploits have actually already happened as well? Probably for or they, another six months. Or are they going to try to keep that under wraps to find out that maybe it was only exploited on one or two processors or by a couple of hackers that weren't very good, so they didn't really have the opportunity to, to push through and really expedite the process before it was caught on the Intel end? I just, they say nothing so far. So all the Apple products have been affected. Like every, and Apple didn't take any kind of crazy beat down this week in the stock price. But I mean, because Apple had lots of great news. But all the Apple products are affected. So your MacBook, um, your iPhone, I believe the watch may be spared. 
and obviously the the Apple Home that's coming. Oh, out. Right. That, yeah, that uh, you know that I guess got, <laughs> that maybe that might be the reason. You know, maybe yeah. we did hear that they pulled it off, and I mean, how do we know that's not the reason that they decided to wait off on that? Maybe they knew that's a little ahead true, of time yeah. too, because they're really in bed with Intel. Like they do yeah. so much business together and have for such a long time that I mean, Apple. Maybe that's why the Apple Home was decided to be. Put Maybe on. is yeah. it the Apple Home or is the Apple Home Pod? Is the Google? I think it's the po- Apple Home Pod. Google's the home. Google's the home. Google's the yeah. home. Apple's the home. Pod. They always have a pod or something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, Amazon's is the Amazon smart speaker as well. Alexa's Alexis. The, Alexa's the agent. Like, who's the? Uh, what's the actual smart speaker called? It's the, the Echo. Echo. The Echo. Echo. That's, that's it. Right. Yeah, that's it. That one's. Yeah, that'll be much easier to remember. At least <laughs> yeah. they're trying to brand that like home. Yeah. Or yeah. I don't, I don't know. Either way. Um, so yeah, Intel. That's going to help, or it's going to hurt Intel's price. It ended up helping AMD, but Apple, in the long run, because even though because they're affected by this, they had such a good holiday season. Like we found out, like the um, the iOS app app store makers, the guys that end up making apps and stuff like that, those guys ended up doing extremely well in 2017. Made like 26 and a half billion dollars in revenue. Phenomenal job. Up like 30 percent year over year. So clearly, downloads are doing fantastic, and great. the developers yeah. are the ones that are getting the kickback from that. Uh, Apple had great sales throughout uh, on the app store. Great sales throughout December through a seven day period, starting the 24th of December. They just ended up. They made eight hundred ninety million, I think, in sales, and three hundred million on New Year's Day. Wow! So big, big numbers. Big numbers. Uh, the yeah. battery. They're replacing batteries in the old phones. Twenty nine ninety nine, and it's just it builds good customer relations. Is well, ultimately what it does. Is a lot of those phones. The skill of the phone isn't there anymore. That phone's not going to be able to do what it once did. Yeah. You know, like it's not going to be able to keep up anything near with the new iPhone 8s that you see out there. But it's still usable and a lot of people just mm. don't have the money to upgrade. So to give a battery, even to, you know, like add to the cycle of life of the phone, ends up giving Apple, I think, a lot of uh, customer kudos. People are going to be happy that they have the ability oh, yeah. to not have to feel boxed into an upgrade. So despite the Intel problems, which affect Intel greatly, Apple, I think, came out of this week looking really good, despite everybody's devices being affected by this. Right. But being patched up. It's being patched up. Oh, right? Apple is one heck of a company. They know what they're doing over there. They, yeah. They, they kind of, definitely there's do. There's this sneaking suspicion I have where they're going to do just fine. <laughs> just fine. <laughs> Well, let's move on to uh, everybody's favorite topic in these past couple months. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. It's been, it, it was slow this week. I mean, they came up 16,000 16, up on Friday. Like, they were up. It's, I mean, it's not near the 19 they were at, right? But they're a little yeah. over 16,000. Uh, Ripple and Ethereum hit new highs. Ethereum. I love that name. Yeah. Ethereum. It sounds very mystical, right? It does. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's. It's Bitcoin, or it's, it's, it's cryptocurrency. I think we know what we're into. Peter Thiel, yeah. uh, one of the early investors in Facebook, announced that he, um, or leaked. I don't know if it announced so much. He He's in Bitcoin, 15 to 20 million, somewhat of an investment. I mean, the guy's got a lot of money. So, yeah. you know, you're going to get into stuff that's like this. That's going to happen. I've seen We've seen big investors make big bets against Bitcoin or, you know, like big bets for Bitcoin. But, I mean... To be honest with you, this cryptocurrency thing. I mean, you, you got Merrill Lynch earlier in the week saying that they were completely banning their advisors from yeah. putting any kind of clients into any cryptocurrency whatsoever. So when you've got banks that are putting things off, Goldman Sachs opening up a crypto desk, right? But not pu- they're pushing that off to like June. Novogartz decided not to do the hedge fund, about, right? Like there's so many of these things that just say that while this is great on a niche level, it's very, very niche. And I'd, I mm-hmm. like that this week, while Bitcoin moved, Ethereum moved, Ripple moved, there didn't seem to be a lot of media coverage where they felt like we really need to chase after this story and make this the biggest story of the week. There were better stories. The economy was doing well. Unfortunately, the Intel story took a lot of news. There, there was just much better things that we could be covering yeah. and let this kind of sit on its own where it kind of belongs. And I hope that's at least for 2018 what we decide to do is this. You can't make the run it made last year, right? Oh, I... I don't know. Anything could happen with Jeez, cryptocurrency. This, this stuff would be ridiculous. I, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't see it. I, I like it over on its own little side. It's not an investment. No, it's too scary. It's not an investment the same way everything else is. We're, we're talking about actual oh, yeah. money this, moving around in a realistic way. This works totally way. differently. Totally yeah. differently. Totally differently. Um, how did vehicle sales do in 2017? 
uh, they were good overall. Like we had really good vehicle sales in 2017, but like December wasn't that good. They had quite a bit of promotions actually going on and December sales still were down overall. So like it, year over year, December sales just weren't doing what they, what they thought, I guess they were going to do or what they were hoping. Cause they it, projected to do there was a lot of promotions and it still didn't work out. Uh, Ford and GM beat their sales estimates for December though, but auto sales in total for 2017, it was, it was good for a few companies. It was really good for Volkswagen. I mean, we've seen excellent numbers for Volkswagen, for Toyota, yeah. for, for certain companies like Ford's trucks. They were doing really good. A lot of companies doing really well, but auto sales in the United States, unfortunately, down 1.8%. Oh, yeah. So overall down, but the, and I mean, this is the, it's a pretty decent down, 17.2 million sold. And it's the first time that there's been a decline in eight years. So while the number, the 1.8% pullback isn't a significant number in and of itself, the fact that we have seen growth both going forward and know that still the auto cycle is already kind of reached its end. Like there are a lot of vehicles are well past what people would consider that expiration for people to get right. new vehicles. Yeah. It might be time in an economy when things are going really well with these new vehicles still not being sold at the numbers that they're projecting things should happen in a, in a marketplace. It might be time for them to reevaluate that and say cars maybe in the last 10 years have been built a little better. Maybe oh, yeah. the cycle of vehicles lasts a little longer than it used yeah. to, right? And maybe that's a way that a lot of these car companies were able to come back after the financial crisis was they made better vehicles overall. Oh, for sure. And yeah. so the cycle is just going to be a little longer. So the sales pull back 1.8%. It's not a great number, first decline in eight years. I mean, that's a big deal. But like I said, companies like Volkswagen, second time this year, and this is overall sales for, throughout the world. Right. We're talking about American here now when we're talking the first decline in eight years. But Volkswagen, over 10 million sold, second time in a row to be the leader in the world, the right? Champ. Like ahead of Toyota, the champ, right? Yeah. Honestly. So that's that's something. And like that is something, yeah. Ford selling lots of trucks. It was It was a good year, I think, for auto sales overall, I think. The, the being down for the first time in eight years is relatively negligible. And when you put it into, into comparison with what everything else the economy is doing, I would hope that it means that A, the vehicles last longer and B, the people are being smarter now with more disposable income right. as employment's becoming more available and there's becoming more money with the stock market being up than spending it on buying a new vehicle. Why? Right, yeah. You've got an eight-year-old vehicle and it runs fantastically yeah. because Ford and GM were making great vehicles then. I'd say ride with that vehicle. Oh, exactly. Bank yeah. that money, son. Hopefully it just doesn't start putting gremlins in their vehicles to make more money. Sometimes I think I got a gremlin <laughs> in the vehicle at work. <laughs> Don't know, yeah. Um, what's going on in the news with uh, Tesla these days? Yeah. So we talked about this earlier in the week in a video, uh, they're just missing estimates all the time. That model three produced, uh, in the last quarter, 2,425, they delivered like just over 1,500, which is well below both those estimates. They were supposed to make, I think it was like close to 5,000. The deliveries were supposed to be up another thousand from that 1,500 number. It just wasn't great. I mean, I'm getting sick and tired of the over-promise, under-deliver of Tesla. I think yeah, a lot of lots. people are. Yeah, shares were up on the week 1.7%, but they're near a seven-month low. Right. That in and of itself speaks to the fact that a lot of the people that were... A lot of people that are heavily... They believe heavily in Tesla are never going to change their opinion. They'll go with it until it goes south. If that's where it goes, oh, and yeah. I'm not saying it will. No, I'm totally yeah. not saying it will. But the, the fanboys of anything that were on the front lines of it, you're going to be hard pressed to convince them otherwise. They'll right. yeah, they'll you fight are. you tooth and nail about things being good. But the fact of the matter is, is they just keep doing this. They do it over and over again. They tell you one number and they give you a much lower number when it comes time for the proof to be in the pudding eventually you're going to have to show and prove. You're not some niche yeah. car company anymore. You're full of backlogs. People know your oh, name. Yeah. It gets good reviews. There's expectations now. Yeah. You have to turn over some money. The valuation of this company is exorbitantly high. You need to turn over something and you yeah. need to turn it over through the numbers. You can't keep saying like production will pick up exponentially and then it never really does. You know, no, like it picks up a decent clip all the time, but there's never where all of a sudden you're on the same level as a car company that's really competing, right? right? So even with the X and the S that sold decent numbers this year, we're up year over year. Of course, the production is picking up, but they are nowhere on the level of of the major car companies. Like no. the GM's e, like EV, the, the little... Uh, electric vehicle, the little, little one similar to Tesla's, outsold the Tesla so much 
Like so yeah. much. Sales were up so much. Like it's not even close, right? So like, and I, okay, GM definitely has the ability to get something under production a lot quicker. The controls are in place right, yeah. because they've been around so much longer. Yeah. But we talked about this with Tesla in the video is that SpaceX takes a lot as well. Like oh, yeah. they just launched for the 17th time in 2017 at the close there. 17 times they launched. They launched a rocket that had been launched into space before and yeah. they were able to launch it again, a second yeah. launch, and it la they land these things to yeah. reuse them yeah. 17 times. Are you telling me that CEO isn't paying attention from Tesla over at the, the other company? He's all invested in that too. His, oh, yeah. his, it seems like his ego is even more on the line with being the one to go to Mars or be in space more than it is yeah. with the car now. He thinks that the car has done its job. It already proves to people. And like the Roadster that they unveiled with the semi-truck, the oh, Roadster yeah. looks ridiculous. It, it does, does a speed that's astronomical. The semi-truck looks off the charts. Pepsi oh, does, and yeah. FedEx and Walmart all in on buying these, right? Like, or at least starting off the product the ordering them yeah, yeah a little bit right oh, yeah. it's a it's a very small Just order testing but, the water or whatever but it's still it's unbelievable the things that they do but eventually you got to make money eventually oh, yeah you, do. you yeah. have to make money when you're that kind of price it's the money that eventually is going to have to come you're gonna have to prove it like like amazon did like netflix did yeah. And that comes from producing cars on the production line and not making new things and going to Mars. You're, you're not going to make no money going to Mars. If you're distracted over there and your shareholders are invested over here, because SpaceX ain't public, no. this is public. Yeah. You've got people on the hook for this that you have buttered them up and told them that this is going to work. Keep giving these fluffed up numbers and don't produce on them. I'm sorry, at some point in time, you got these shareholders should ask for some answers. Oh, definitely. Sure. Why? Yeah. Why do we keep way overestimating? Yeah. Why can't you come underestimate and overwhelm me instead of underwhelm me all the time? Exactly. All the time to the point where people start to question your credibility. No, I totally agree with yeah. that. Yeah. It just it it gets a little old. It's a great product, and the guy's a genius. He's such a genius. He knows. I mean, he knows what he's doing. It's just, and I don't think it's a marketing thing. I really think that they're just, it's like a habit that they have. It's like they're yeah. trying to compete on a level that they're not on yet. And eventually they're going to be made out to be people that, or a company that maybe people don't trust their estimates. They don't trust their don't guidance. Know. They make promises, but they can't they, deliver they on them. They can't right? keep them. That's yeah. a big deal, right? I want to have a company that I own that I can set my watch by. Yeah. You know, De destroy your estimates. In exactly. Instead of coming in short constantly and viciously short. Yeah. Not just a little bit. So good car, doing well. Produ production in the X's and S's are going up. Shares were up, down all the seven month overall, though. And uh, yeah, 5,000 per week by Q2 is what they expect to get the Model 3 up to. But again, that's an estimate. Exactly. That, yeah. Is that estimate going to even be close? I, man, Who knows right now? At Who this knows? point, Probably I don't not. take estimates yeah. from Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what has BlackBerry been up to recently? Killing it. They had a great earnings call. We looked at it. The, the services and licensing was doing so well for BlackBerry. Uh, this was, what, three weeks ago maybe? Jumped 24% this week. Highest since June 2013. I mean, they were six, seven dollars five, six months ago, and yep. they're up 13 something right now. Blackberry's oh, doing really well. So uh, they signed a working agreement with Baidu, which is the internet provider over in China. Think, okay. so, think of Google, because Google's banned in China. Yes. yes so exactly. this is Baidu, very similar, Baidu. right? Um, this, they're working on software with them for autonomous vehicles. So just that partnership, because oh, yeah. we, we've talked about Blackberry. The devices were, I mean, it was never going to compete. No, they got lucky one time. We all like Block Breaker, but it just yeah. it doesn't pan out over the long run because there were other companies doing better things and doing them quicker and coming to market faster yeah. and having less problems. And BlackBerry just wasn't on that level. But they got lucky. They did get lucky, and some of the things they do inside the the actual device with the software was strong and remains strong right now. So they've you know done a lot of licensing and stuff, and they're doing a really good job with it. They've got a lot of contracts from a lot yep. of big companies, from governments, and they're moving in the right direction by deciding to go into things like a team up with Baidu and autonomous vehicles as opposed to pursuing the devices. I mean, we just know that. Yeah. They yeah. Pu pulled out of that entirely. They're 
they're not going to be recognized, I don't think, on the marketplace. In the next year or so, when BlackBerry's no. actually back, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of people that maybe haven't been paying attention that go like, are they making phones? Like yeah. those guys? They're still making I, I, phones? I think guys our age will recognize BlackBerry, but the millennials that were born in 2000s probably really wouldn't because but when he, they came out, they were like nine years but old. But even guys our age, I think, like just because BlackBerry like receded so much into the darkness. Just like disappeared. And then have come out again, but as a completely different company. And yeah. because of the working relationships that they have and what they actually do there, they're going to continue to grow as a company. There's no question about it. They're going to reaffirm themselves in some way or another in the lexicon of the stock market. Oh, yeah. And, but they were gone for a long time. Or they time. became very, very Canadian-centric. We watched it up here. But yeah. BlackBerry down in the United States or on the international markets, as soon as their devices fell off. Just got out of the light. Yeah, completely yeah. out of the light. Up here, we watched it for like maybe a nationalistic thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. We, we're, yeah. we're seeing it because we're Canadian. But BlackBerry is coming back on an international level. There's there's no doubt about it in my mind. The company has shifted. The, it's got great management, great leadership. Yeah. They've got a vision of what they're doing. And uh, they just continue to make partnerships. They're definitely not a company that's receding any kind of partnerships or no, agreements so. at this point. No. They're doing a great job of growing and growing in a strong direction with multiple companies, multiple governments. It's a, yeah. Yeah, it's a company that's making a comeback story, quietly. I think people our age, like I said, I think there's going to be a lot of people that completely negate that BlackBerry yeah. existed. And people like it. a good comeback. Oh, I'm yeah. telling Rocky, right? Exactly. <laughs> Rocky style. They're coming back. <laughs> yeah. I believe in it. Let's talk about the United States a bit. Uh, let's uh, take a look at their economy. Everything's doing good. I mean, things are doing good. Payrolls didn't rise to the levels they were expecting this, the, the, the past uh, payroll number there. Uh, 148,000, 190,000 was the estimate. The jobless rate, though, still 4.1%, staying in line with that number. ISM manufacturing jumped, and they weren't expecting that to even jump, so the, there's more growth at the factory level. Things are going up. It jumped 1.5 to 59.7. Holiday sales were good. Uh, Macy's was up 1.1% in the same store sales. Even though they're closing some stores, their shares did take a bit of a pullback. Same with JCPenney, even though JCPenney's same store sales were up 2.4% over the holidays. Costco up 8.8%. I mean, we talked about the numbers that Apple did. Uh, the only company that really had that really stood out as struggling that didn't that we've seen numbers from so far. Let's not that we've seen the numbers from. Yeah. It was L Brands, Victoria's Secret. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Didn't do very well. Uh, estimates were off. They had to cut some of the guidance back from the next quarter because I guess lingerie just not in the mix. I guess 2017 not, yeah. was not the year. If you were looking <laughs> no. to get lucky, it was not that year, right? That, so L Brands is just not, uh, that, yeah. But the other companies doing really well. Holiday sales up basically across the board. And we've seen it, the Red Book numbers earlier this month. December was just great. Like yeah. things came out better than even the estimates and the estimates were good. The estimates already were good. The estimates were higher than last year's numbers. Yeah. And... To still beat those estimates, beat last year's numbers, the economy is doing fantastic. I mean, there's That's just good. That's yeah, good hear, it's right? really good to hear, right? And yeah. you look at it like you got to look at it, like the job jobless rate one point eight or four point one percent. That's so low. That like, is that, low. That is so low. And I know there's a lot of people that would say, like, okay, people left the job pool. They're not. You don't get these same numbers anymore because a lot of people have left the job market entirely. And that might very well be true, but I don't think it's any more than any other time when an economy is really doing well because you see the amount of opportunity out there. Yeah. You have a lot of people re-enter the job pool. Numbers on the on the factory growth side, I mean, is excellent. Everything was so good in November to then get numbers like this coming out of December. It was a heck of a first year for Donald Trump. It was definitely was as yeah. much as hate you hear for, like for that guy. He he did he did really good. I think for the first year. First year, his administration really stepped it up. They've made that economy. It's yeah. it's very much more geared towards capitalism. And I think we're sure. we're going to cover another story here in a second about that. But yeah, go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> U.S. economy doing excellent, much like the Canadian economy is doing. All right, uh, everybody have their ears ready. Let's talk about earnings. Earnings. There was not a lot. Uh, Walgreens Boots Alliance. One dollar twenty eight cents of EPS revenues of thirty point seven billion. They beat both numbers. Pharmacy sales up eight point nine percent. Same store sales up four point seven percent. 
So, I mean, Walgreens obviously doing well, taking on about 1,900 Rite Aid stores here pretty quickly. They, they bought those not too long ago. They're going to be closing about 600 of those. Walgreens continues to grow, competing against CVS, competing yep. against Walmart, competing against what is going to be an Amazon competitor at some point in time. Uh, so, Walgreens continues to push forward. It, it's good earnings on the retail pharmacy level. There's yep. no doubt about that. But there's a lot of competition there's a lot of competition. You see Costco growth at the holiday season. Costco has a pharmacy. So, I mean, everything Walgreens does, they've got people knocking on their door from every angle. It's yeah. A, yeah, it's retail pharmacy, brick and mortar. I'm not too sure how long companies like this will stay stay as dominant as the Walmarts, the Costcos, yeah. the Amazons. But good earnings in a nutshell, not something I'm... I would be jumping into without talking to my advisor. <laughs> right, for sure. Yeah, yeah, just a lot of competition in the pharmacy market. Rite Aid suffering probably the first real beatdown from this, oh, this yeah? um, co- consolidation of this marketplace because they've been being destroyed for a couple of years now. They were supposed to miss by two cents on their earnings. They ended up at zero, so they made nothing. Um, but 5.37 or 35 billion in revenues down still 6% year over year. Pharmacy sales down 3%. Pharmacy services revenues down 12%. It's a lot of drop off. It's And we talked about this with the Amazon topic earlier in the week where I said like, people think they might buy Target. They already own a grocery store in Whole Foods. To add in another department store that does groceries, they're already kind of be stepping on their own toes. Are they going to pull groceries out of Target? I know it's probably geared towards a whole different marketplace, but when they're talking about getting into pharmacy, man, you could get a lot of Rite Aid stores. You could get Rite Aid for really cheap, and you could get into this pharmacy business quick. You could get these licenses in these states. This would be out of the way so fast. Logistics for shipping already in place, the ability to purchase generic drugs at a very cheap price in place. This would give them direct competition, which is, I think... It would be an easier transition than Target. They just did this big right, transition yeah. with Whole Foods. Why would you get into another retailer? You're already a retailer without the overhead. That's right. Yeah. But all the analysts keep talking about it like it has to happen. I don't know why. And they say this is the year for it. And I mean, I heard more than one guy talk about it earlier this week. I thought I would take a completely contrarian approach to it and just say like this Rite Aid idea sounds more plausible to me. It gives them more assets in an asset class they're looking to get into, which is the pharmacy de- department, right? right? Yeah. Which is actually being able to move drugs. Good for them. Good for them, right? <laughs> you yeah. got to hustle somehow, right? <laughs> yeah. Move some drugs. Do what you got to do. And uh, I think that's a better idea, like personally, because I just, I we know that Walgreens didn't cherry pick the Rite Aid stores because mm-hmm. Rite Aid ended up with, there's going to have 600 of the 1,900 that they picked up closed. So a third of the stuff they bought, they're planning on closing anyway. So they clearly bought by region or in a big bundle. It wasn't cherry yeah. picked unless they're planning on doing something phenomenal with those 600 stores they're closing. Maybe they're going to start up Walgreens inside there. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Better locations. Yeah. I don't know what the plan is, but it seems like they're actually closing the store. Yeah. So they didn't cherry pick. I think Amazon moving into the Rite Aid space would probably be a better idea than them moving into Target. Target would be yeah, maybe, 9% yeah. of their market cap it would cost them to buy Target at a 15% premium. And Target's been growing enough at the department store level, you'd have to pay a premium. Yeah. You'd have to pay a you'd significant to, yeah. one. And now you've got competition. Target and Whole Foods, your own two companies, are competing against each other. And you're now paying brick and mortar rent. On two separate giant brick and yeah, mortar. Yeah, I don't com- know why you would do that. It's just a mad consolidation of brick and mortar. Yeah. That's Amazon's killing brick and mortar. Yeah, they, they don't are. Need, they don't need to buy into it. No, why right? would they? This at least would give them the licenses. The, right. Th- that's what I was thinking was it would really expedite the process and give you a lot more retail outlets to do business on that level. Because business on that level is still going to be done. People need pills today. Yeah. You can't ship a pill from Amazon today to me and have it to me in an hour but a pharmacist at a pharmacy can fill it in an hour yeah and that's the way a lot of time medication needs to be done is people need their stuff filled they're going to need a point of sale if they're going to get into this pharmacy thing full bore they're going to need a point Mm -hmm. of sale i don't think picking up target as a whole is a much better idea than picking up a drugstore that ultimately has a lot of the space hasn't has the ability to service all this stuff already in place the controls in their company and their company is in the toilet (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah, right? you yeah. can buy them for for pennies on the dollar. That's at this a good point. way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. In so the Constellation Brands, so the makers of Corona, were the only other like big earnings calls. Uh, Two dollars EPS beat the street by eleven. 
Uh, 1.8 billion in revenue, that was off 0.6% year over year, so not crazy. Beer shipment volume up 5.9%. The wine shipment volume, though, killing them down 19.1%. So yeah, wine obviously over Constellation Brands, not making the kind of money that they hope it is. Uh, $3 billion share buyback program was announced. It was a slow week for earnings still. It's just, yeah, very slow. We are totally out of the earnings season. We are, yeah. at least another three, four months. There's, it's cold season, cold yeah. and flu season, but it is not <laughs> earnings season. Yeah. Uh, I don't have my glasses with me, but I think the next one is airlines. Airlines, airlines. yeah. Do you wear glasses? No, I don't. You don't wear glasses. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's strange. Uh, yeah, b- just more bonuses. Uh, American Airlines, Southwest, JetBlue announcing $1,000 bonuses to, to their employees once these tax cuts kick in. Just more bonuses. We see this yeah. across the board with so many companies in the last few weeks giving bonuses back, giving money back. And we don't want to just see this money be given away. We want to see this money used in R&D and M&A, and we want to see it uh, increase the EPS and share buyback programs. And, I mean, it's going to happen on all those levels. It's going to happen. But this is a good first step. Yeah. It's, it's a nice little touch in the media. And it it makes your competitor, I think, have to do it too. When every yeah, airline, definitely. Yeah. When every airline gives a thousand dollar bonus, somebody has to be like, okay, I'll give it to you. Yeah, too. exactly. De- Delta's not giving no bonus. No, but Delta's not, decided no. no bonus. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just more bonuses. The tax reform is helping everything out, and bonuses, bonuses, bonus for everybody. Bonuses for everybody, <laughs> all around. Uh, let's talk about the U.S. Justice Department. Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Um, they rescinded an Obama policy that said that uh, the federal law could be eased when you're considering any kind of marijuana recreationally or medically yeah, yeah. inside of a state that has legislated that the state can do it their way. The state wants to have medical marijuana, wants to have recreational marijuana. Obama had a policy in that was allowing the federal government kind of a more hands-off approach. Yes. These are Republicans. They're getting stuff done. Mm -hmm. Jeff Sessions is not a fan of marijuana, thinks that it's as bad as any other scheduled drug. Right. Has no desire to take part in it, and they've completely reversed that. So they're allowing prosecutors in these states a wide amount of latitude to charge people. So basically, you could be carrying a little bit of pot, and I could be carrying a little bit of pot, and you could get probation, and I could do time, or it all really depends on who the judge is you go in front of. And what their policy is personally. That's not really fair. That's kind of scary. You know what the fact of the matter is? Is that I think federal law has all... And we talked about this in the year review thing for the marijuana. That's topic number four, year in review. Yeah. Medical marijuana. And I said, this was one of the things I use as a caveat as to why not to not maybe jump in full bore with these companies really overvalued in Canada. Was what if the United States decided to enact federal law and say this state law stuff doesn't fly here. This is a different government. We have different belief structures. Yeah. I pointed this out, and it, what, three days later, this we find out this is happening. That's right, yep. Because th- the federal government still makes the rules. You know that. You already know that, right? Like, it doesn't make a difference what your teacher says. Your principal overrides your teacher. Or oh, however, for sure, yeah. However the hierarchy works. Yeah. So, I mean, you can decide to try to overstep your bounds as much as possible, but sometimes it just comes home to roost on you. And when you've got a Republican government and you want to be really brazen and, you know, like make recreational marijuana legal or, yeah. or have medical marijuana be really flagrant and start to define the way your state looks at itself. Because a lot of these states, some of the first things you hear about these states that have gone this direction is that as a descriptor of that state. And I think on a whole, I don't think the United States run by a group of Republicans who are notoriously fairly religious and fairly, you know, they tighten the belt pretty tight yeah. as far as this stuff goes. They're not going to really want to have a bunch of their areas inside the continental United States that fly under that flag being associated with that as the first descriptor. Right. So I think that starts to bother them. And, you know, cracking down with something I could see as a definite potential, lo and behold, that's what we're going to see. And now it's really going to be. There's three more years of this president at, at, That's the, right. at a minimum. That's right. Some of these states that have been really liberal with this could find this ending up in a pretty hard way for them. Yeah. You could see a lot of people starting to serve some jail time in those states that they haven't been serving or haven't have been threatened with and have been allowed to get fairly flagrant with 
what is still a federal mm-hmm. scheduled drug in yeah. the United States. It's not being legalized federally down there like it is up here. That's kind of just like punishing the people that live in that state, but not punishing, like, let's say the state or the mayor itself, whoever regulated that. Yeah, the state. Yeah, obviously the state can't be, I mean, I don't know how they can hold the state accountable. Maybe because maybe fine them or something? I, I, I don't know, but it's yeah, kind, of, kind of unfair I just to don't the people think that politically, live in that state. Yeah, I mean, it's times are tough. I know it's true, yeah. You need to understand what you're living under as far as federal law. Right, I mean, yeah. It's, it's if somebody tells you, if your babysitter tells you, that you can go do whatever you want, but you know your parents are not having it. You go do whatever you want. Yeah. Who do you think you answer to at the end of the day? The parents, right? right? So, I mean, federal law still supersedes state law. Oh, yeah, for sure. I just yeah. find that to be pretty straightforward. No, it is pretty straightforward. Like, yeah, yeah. So, if you want to go into that gray area, you take a chance where then you have a political party take power on the federal yeah, level yeah. that decides that that is uh, no fly zone anymore. Yeah. And... Somebody pays the piper. And unfortunately, yeah. if you're the one holding the bag of grass, you're co- yeah. you're going to pay the piper. You are, yeah. And I I don't, ag- I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it because I think you should be able to do whatever you want, period. Yeah. I don't really understand the whole idea of everything being so highly regulated to begin with. But it's maybe that's coming from somebody who has no desire to go out and do, do it. it. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah, have exactly. any desire to do it, so I don't really care. Yeah. But other people, they're under the impression that you know they're gonna they're gonna take the chance, yeah. and there may be some serious punishments to come from that. And what we heard earlier uh, this week as well was that Australia became the fourth country for allowing exports of medical marijuana. So I was talking to a few people about this this week in relation to Canada. Because a lot of the weed stocks in Canada really fluctuated this week. There was, and they fluctuated. What a lot of people said was off the Jeff Sessions, the the stuff that they were changing the Obama policy right, right okay. at the at the Defense Department. But I I don't think that um, I don't think that people were taking into consideration that Australia is very very acclimated to growing marijuana. There is a lot of space. Yo, yeah. Australia would be as aggressive, if not more so, to get on a international stage and control a marketplace and they definitely have the means to do it they're a first oh, yeah. world country yep. they've, they've got all the means to do this canada now has some real competition as australia enters the medical marijuana export business because the only other companies are the netherlands and uruguay yeah and canada and these marijuana stocks they had a bit of a jump this a dip and then a jump again yeah. at the end of the week but people were saying it was off the Jeff Sessions thing. I think the dip might have been a lot more off people getting a little scared from Australia. Personally, yeah, I would yeah. be concerned. For the, sure. The stocks here are way, way overvalued. Way overvalued. Now you all of a sudden get another major country involved. This isn't Uruguay. Yeah, yeah no. This isn't Uruguay, right? Australia yeah. could really make a push here. Yeah. I saw that as news that really got... Like, was under the radar. Nobody mentioned it at all. Like, and I understand the Jeff Sessions things. That's obviously going to get a lot of attention. Yeah. But the Australia thing seemed to get under the radar. And I thought that was the big news because that could be another powerhouse in this industry. Oh, for sure. If that country gets behind it, like, like Canada has got behind the medical marijuana, you know, whatever you want to call it, growth boom here. Right. Then uh, you could see two countries really going at it one of which yeah. has a climate that's a much perfect yeah perfect for much it. more climatized yeah. a lot less controls year round greenhouses right, yeah. all that stuff the controls might not be have to be near as strict right as it would be here where you need to build inside because our temperatures are not going to be conducive to that kind of growth no you're not you're gonna and have, so there's all that overhead and how much less overhead would they have with things oh, being a lot more... With the, yeah. all the heating and whatever else. But then again, it, right? if they get into it and they start shipping it, are we a lot closer to the countries that are going to end up be, being the first adopters? I mean, we do... like Okay, so they say federal law can be enacted in the United States and the yeah. states now again. But are, is it going to be? That's the question. Or is the United States going to start to fall in more line with a more liberal policy in regards to this in the long run? Right, okay. Become first adopters. You start talking about shipping logistics. It costs a lot more to ship from Australia to the Western Hemisphere right. than it does to ship from Canada. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to fly by plane. I know this is a little off topic. I wonder if they're going to do it by plane or by boat. Because do you think there'd be more pirates involved then knowing that ship's going to have a bunch of marijuana on it? 
That might be. I, it, I, I don't know. It's a little off topic. I was I, just, just I don't, yeah. I don't know enough about the, the pirate Pirates. levels no. in the <laughs> no <laughs> no <in> Australian <laughs> yeah, waters. I have either, but, but I'm it's just uh, wondering, yeah, right? and it depends. I think again on who the adopters are. Right. I, I think it ends up if uh, Australia can get countries more over in their part of the woods. That, right. Be, yeah, but true. is that Southeast Asia? Is that going to be the early adopters? Probably not. No, I don't think so. And yeah. is, is the money really there? Probably not. No, it's so, probably be like dealing with Canada. Or... So they're going to have to... So the logistics of that yeah. could be a little bit of a, a hiccup for them. But right. again, another country where Maybe a lot of stuff could go on. A lot. Well, they're already in on it, right? The Netherlands is already yeah, in on yeah, it. Yeah, right, yeah, the Netherlands is one of the four countries that already does it. So. That's true. So yeah, you could see it's just another competitor, another competitor to add into the market space. Another thing for the people who are invested in Canadian marijuana stocks, you talk Jeff Sessions and the U.S. Justice Department. Now this, I think it's just more reasons to watch and yeah. uh, not have your money actually directly involved in it. I'm watching. I'm watching from an arm's reach. Yeah, it's interesting to watch the market go up on the, Definitely the medical that. marijuana, but it's not interesting to be invested. Yeah. Aurora, another big week. Uh, Afria had a good week. But it's yeah, it's scary. Yeah, definitely. The, the is, price yeah. to sales and the price price to revenue. It's just it's ridiculous. Right. It's ridiculous. So yeah, I'm gonna have to read if uh, there's any pirates lurking in Australian yeah, waters. Yeah, pirates. Very lurking. very curious That's... about that. Uh, let's move on to uh, Canada. How's our uh, how are our our, is, uh, our employment doing? Unemployment. Sorry. Unemployment and employment are both doing good. So employment is growing at the fastest rate in 15 years. Employment's doing fantastic. Last year, uh, in 2017, we added 422,500 jobs. Uh, not 394,200 of them were full-time jobs. So right. a good clip of that was was full-time work. That's a big number, biggest number in years and years and years. So we're doing a great job on the employment side, and unemployment is at its lowest number since 1976. So wow. since they started keeping the data. Yeah. So since data existed, <laughs> they started data, and the day after they started data, we still beat the unemployment number this this week. So five nice. five point seven percent since the day after data was invented. <laughs> Not bad. Not Do, bad at doing all. Doing really well. Canada's unemployment. The economy's doing well. That's and good. It's it's things are picking up, and that's good for people. It gives people the opportunity to work places. It gives people the opportunity to change careers, move for regions. Sure. We're having, we're going to have interest rate increases. There's no question about it. Like Stephen Plaw's Bank of Canada, th there's no question that this is going to do it. Right. So like even with Toronto having a ridiculous, um, the housing bubble last year, things have evened off. Um, the capacity, the amount of houses that were actually available for sale were up quite a bit in December, but housing prices still found a way to rise a little bit. Even they've pulled back in the second half of 2017 off that bubble. But I mean, the real estate market is strong. We know debt is the big problem. Right, yeah. that is the big problem in Canadian households. Is we carry a lot of debt over a dollar and seventy one cents per dollar of income we have. It's a lot of debt, consumer debt. Canadians spent over a thousand dollars in credit card consumer debt this holiday season, and only like twenty percent of them have plans to pay it off in the next three months. Some of them don't have plans to pay it off for the next five years. They said. Five years, they're going to go through five more Christmas seasons spending a thousand dollars on it's credit. It's going to compound. Right? It's it's getting out of control, right? So we need this economy to come back, but we need people to to respect it, right? Respect the economy, respect the money that you're making. You're not going to be. This is the you always hear this Albertan saying of just give me one more oil boom. Oh yeah, God, I promise not to spend it or whatever yeah. it is. Too many times too have many we times. been blessed with booms of some sort or another. Canada seems to be roaring back to where it deserves to be. It's a great country full of great hardworking people. We're smart. We're, you know, like we're as, as hardworking as, as people you're going to find and in every kind of industry. Canadians yeah. are well-educated. But the problem is, is we seem to get feeling ourselves too much. And when things are going well... We put ourselves way out on the line, and the best thing to do is to pare it back this time. For sure, let yeah. things build. Let yourself yeah. enjoy it, but build your nest egg, build your retirement. Yeah. Try enjoy to, your money. Just don't enjoy spending it. Yeah, or enjoy it on a budget. Yeah, right. No, that, yeah, Be yeah, smart right enough too. to because you get these conflicting reports of unemployment being great, employment numbers rising the most you know in fifteen years, but then you also get these debt numbers. You get this consumer credit number mm, from from yeah. the holidays, and you start to wonder. At what, what which way is going to tip which? Yeah, because the interest rate's going to go up. We're going to get three of them probably next year. Palaz knows that real estate's three evened out. Huh? We're we're going to get three of them next year. So your interest rate is going to be one seven five. 
that's going to be the bank's overnight rate. So that rate is going to be, after prime, it's going to be a decent rate. If you're refinancing your house in the next couple of years, you are going to notice an increased payment, right. even though the, the actual years of amortization are not going to be any different. It's going to be the same amount of time you've got left, but that payment will have gone up. Do you want to be on the hook for a bunch of nonsense you bought at the holidays? No, you wouldn't. You don't. No. You, I mean, there's. you just really got to think it through. Allow, allow the U.S. economy, the Canadian economy, the stock market the way it is. Allow the boom to thrive inside your financial uh, life. You right. know what I yeah. mean? The way that you're living your financial life. Allow that to help blossom that to the next level. Do not allow greed and prosperity to cripple you in the years forward because things will plateau yeah. things will change these ebbs and flows happen there's a reason we see records broken in some years unemployment numbers broken in some years and then years and years of stagnation or where things are on a downswing and then you get it 10 15 years later the right. breaks again because the breaks are a boom period that you should appreciate that that's when you stack your chips in your favor you yeah. don't start blowing it on Nonsense. Nonsense. Really, but yeah. you can lead a horse to water. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is yeah. what it is. I'm not <laughs> spending it. <laughs> uh, let's look a little into Spotify. What's going on with them? They're going public. So they've decided that they are going to go public. Uh, it's going to be a direct public offering. So it's not going to be your typical IPO. They didn't use an underwriter. Um, they're not selling these shares to a bunch of pension plans and stuff. This is going to be direct right from Spotify. You're buying this. So prospectus from Spotify. Yeah. No Goldman Sachs. No JP Morgan. No big investment bank on the underwriting side. And the SEC is looking into this because the SEC wants to make sure that companies that don't have a lot of risk, which Spotify has a lot of risk, don't start doing these direct public offerings all the time because yeah. it really eliminates the middleman that goes out and puts out the feelers to find out what you're really worth. So when right. you're doing it yourself, you're basically putting your own worth on things. And right now they're valued around $20 billion. So they have a pretty high valuation, but nobody's been had a chance to take a look at their books enough to see it, right? When you get an underwriter, they've got their name attached to it as well. They're right. not just out there doing it, flying by the seat of their parents. They're going to then go to these big funds, hedge funds, pension funds that are going to buy big allotments of this IPO, but they know that this underwriter has credibility. When you're directly offering it right from the company, it can be a lot more muddied waters for sure. For so sure. the SEC is looking into it. I believe they have till the 15th of February to report back. But Spotify is going ahead with it. So no underwriter. It's going to be a lot more risky as far as an IPO goes because you don't know did they undervalue themselves, overvalue it, or do it right on the money. It's, right, it's really tough yeah. to tell. You can't get regular an, an underwriter to hit it right on the money. That's why IPOs bounce around so much. So to expect a company to be able to do it for themselves, it might just be next to impossible. And I would imagine most companies overvalue themselves and undervalue themselves. Oh, for sure. I bet you they yeah. do. Yeah. And Spotify's obviously looking to get a lot of their, you know, a lot of their staff paid. Yeah. That's going to be what this ends up doing is a lot of the staff ends up making quite a bit of money off this. Yeah. So, I mean, you could be looking for some goodwill, but you'd like to hope from your staff, but you'd like to hope that you're still thinking of the shareholders in the long run. Yeah. And if this company's really growing, I mean, it's got all the licenses. It's signed Universal, Warner Brothers, Sony. It's got all the big licenses for all the music out there. They've got 70 million paid subscribers, they announced. So that's up from 60 million in just July. That's, yeah, that's and that's huge. paid subscribers. So yeah. Apple Music only has 30. They've got 70 million. So Spotify is doing really good work. They've got 140 million total users. So that's another 70 million users that get the advertised platform of Spotify. Right. Where okay. you see, the, and that's obviously well monetized too. You're They're making their money on both ends. Yeah. The only thing that really came up that other than the, the SEC being kind of concerned about the direct public offering is there was a $1.6 billion copyright uh, infringement suit brought to them this week oh, yeah, okay. by uh, Wix and Music Publishing. So there was a Doors song that was really popular. Free Fallen by Tom Petty was brought up. It's, they want a $1.6 billion. So it's, it's not reasonable. They say there's a 10,784 compositions that the that Spotify didn't have the actual licensing agreement to be using okay. on the Spotify service. But they're using the $150,000 maximum fine penalty per song yeah. to get to that number of $1.6 sure, yeah. billion. So there's no way that they're no. going to end up getting that. So while no. it was news, I don't think that really... 
conflicts with a lot. And I think if Spotify did a good enough job and the SEC sees that with the way that they're valuing their company, I would imagine there's still going to be a lot of regulatory constraints going forward with oh, yeah, any sure. other company that does a direct public offering. Like there always would be, right? Because the SEC is going to be a lot more trustworthy of one of the major underwriters mm-hmm. than they're going to be of a company that's obviously doesn't do this for a living. But if everything checks out, I can't see them not allowing this to happen. So it seems like Spotify is probably going to go IPO in the first quarter if everything works out. Yeah. So if everything works out, 70 million paid subscribers. Right, this music yeah. service seems to have really taken off. It's in the lead by all music services by a lot. Oh yeah, for sure, it definitely is. Yeah. It's about time. I mean, we knew this was going to go public. We've heard about this ever mm-hmm. since they started signing major licensing agreements with the major labels. So, it's it's going to happen. It's going to happen in 2018, barring the SEC saying no dice to this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the story, Jack. Any more news, or is that it? There, that is the news, my friend. That is the news. That's the news. Uh, I wish I had something else for you. Next week's probably going to be a little bit busier. People are coming back. Volumes were still down this week. Yeah. Um, there was definitely not the near the amount of trading that we see on a regular week. People are still on holidays. Yep. Kids a lot of, in a lot of schools are still on holidays going back tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Uh, so you're going to end up seeing volumes pick up, which means you're going to end up seeing a lot of stories pick up. And hopefully we're going to get a lot more videos out that have to do with uh, some interesting topics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We have I a new format, actually. There's going to be a bit of a new format. Yeah, we're going yeah. to continue this format. Yeah, we are. This is going to be completely market recap. We're going to go through the major news stories of yep. the week. We're going to cover a bunch of numbers, earnings calls, any kind of uh, economy data that's out there. We're going to do all that kind of stuff. And we're going to give a little bit of opinion. But we're going to go to... To a bit of a different format. We are. Yeah. I think it's going to be exciting. I think you guys are going to like it. Yeah, I think so too. Me right? too. I think we'll add a little bit more uh, pizzazz to things. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, pizzazz. that's a good way of putting it. I like that it. word, pizzazz. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. That is it for podcast number 11. You know 11 was my, is my lucky number? Or is it? I've never played 11 in like a, a game or anything. <laughs> no. Like, yeah, it's always been the lucky number for me. That seems to be the number that I am uh, yeah. most gravitate towards. I like 85 just because that's the year I was born in. I, just, yeah, I, like, I, like, all, I like finishing first, but twice. I like <laughs> Two, two ones, you two ones. You uh, are Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. This was podcast number eleven. We look forward to fifty-one more of these in twenty eighteen. Fifty-one more. That is right. Fifty-one more. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. I think so. I'll see you again next week, Anthony. Check you later. Check you later. <laughs>